Stop doing I'm that. gonna go ahead and start your intro. You've now tuned in to the Drawing Board Podcast, a powerful, thought-provoking discussion where we talk about family, relationships, ministry, community, and career. Let's see what exciting guests we have on our show today. Great evening, Drawing Board Nation. This is the founder and the host of the Drawing Board Podcast, Andre Ebron, and I have two amazing guests on tonight. Uh, I happen to be related to them. Yes, yes. They are my very own children. Uh, I like to say that when I have my family on, and I've interviewed several great people, but having the family episode is amazing to me just because I want you all to get a chance to know our family and get a chance to see. Uh, I believe you see me at my best when you get a chance to see my family. So glad to have uh, the scholar, the violinist, and the writer, Miss Christian Ebron. How are you, Christian? Good. Good, good. And I have the creative, the athlete, and the leader, Mr. Andre Ebron II. How are you, sir? Great. Great, great. So tonight, the queen is not with us. She had a youth leaders meeting uh, for our great ministry, Kano's International Church, where our pastor is the chief apostle, Dr. Carol Lee Dixon. Uh, been there for a number of years, been learning, uh, teach, been taught, trained, educated, and equipped to be an effective witness for Christ in the body and for the kingdom. So uh, peace and blessings to all those at the youth leaders meeting. If you're looking for a place to bring your child where they can learn uh, the word of God, can experience the love of God and see the power of God demonstrated. Uh, my kids have been in ministry uh, before they were even born. They were being uh, traveled down to Florida in utero while their mother was dancing and ministering. So you guys have been mm-hmm. part of Kano's since you've been born. How, how has it been to be a, a youth at Kano's? Talk to me about it. Uh, I think it's really cool because we, um, we get to do a lot of things like dancing and we get to help with uh, making the choreography and everything. So it's a learning experience for everyone. Oh, cool. What about you, Dre? I mean, I mean, sometimes it is good for me, but sometimes, like, you got practice, and sometimes you don't want to go. Oh, you have practice, and sometimes you don't want to go? Yeah. yeah what's some of the things that you've been able to do, though, as part of the youth ministry? Uh, some places Kalahari, you guys have been able to go. Kalahari? Uh, uh, C.J. Barrymore. C.J. Barrymore. Red Oaks. Red Oaks. Uh, Florida. Florida. Yeah, I was waiting for it. And so you guys, we uh, used to have a conference down in Florida, and we were going to Florida. Yeah, just get your phone. Just pick it up. We were going to Florida so much that you guys thought that we, you said, oh, we got to go down to the Florida house because you guys were flying uh, since you were little. And, uh, yeah, I think since, well, ever since you've been born, you've been flying. So mm-hmm. God blessed us to be able to go down to the conference every year. And when we, when we went down to the conference, we went to the parks. And uh, you guys got it. It's a whole little crew of you all around the same age, and you guys have been growing up. What is it like to have uh, a dad uh, that, that ser- and a mom that serves in ministry? Um, it, it's crazy. It's crazy? What yeah. do you mean? <laughs> Like, sometimes you don't even get to sit next to your parents during church. Oh, like, okay. You don't get a chance to sit next to us in church. Yeah. Talk to me about that. How you feel about it? I mean, I'm okay with it. But, like, you know, sometimes you want to just sit with your parents. Oh, uh, yeah. I've seen sometimes where your mom is back there and you lay that big rock head on her while the word is going forth. <laughs> I see it. Don't do this right now. No, we're going to do it right now. No. Come yeah. <laughs> on. Huh? Don't. Oh, no. Listen. So, uh, one of the things about it, man, is that I see you back there uh, on your phones or different things like that. But what do you think, Christian? What is it like to have a mom and dad that serve in ministry? I think it's really cool because, like, just to. Um, Bless you. Because, you know, as a kid, you don't really, um, I guess, when you're younger, you don't really pay attention in church. But when your parents, like, push you to, you know, pay attention, it could, um, 
only have a good effect on your life. So, you know, that's cool. You learn to be more mature. More mature? Okay. That. Yes. So I remember when we were younger and Pastor used to pray for y'all. And she used to do this thing and y'all used to fall out. And we used to think that something was going wrong. Oh, you talking oh, yeah. about when people fall out in the spirit? <laughs> yes, we were young. We used spirit? to think that something was wrong, <laughs> so we used to cry. Oh, I you, did not cry. Cap. You did not cry? Cap. Okay. Cap. Well, Andre, Cap. You, you know, you and mom are a lot alike in that way. Uh, we did the, uh, like, the true colors test, and What's you that? all, it was, remember, we were talking about, like, the different colors that mean different things, like uh, yellow and orange. Like, orange, I think, was, like, impulsive, just ready to, like, adventurous and explore life. Blue is, like, you know, emotional and things of that nature. And I think, like, yellow, I think yellow was, like, analytical and green was something else. But what I noticed in our house, what do you think about this? I think that uh, that you and mom, that you act a lot like me, but you think a lot like mom. And... I think Christian thinks a lot like me, but she acts a lot like mom. So it was both of like. Yeah, so you it's like a, I got your personality. Yeah, and you I got pers- mom's like features. Your features. features. <laughs> you think that you Certain look like features. your mom? Yeah, I, I, I got I got curlier hair than all of y'all. Oh, you talking about the hair? <laughs> oh, wow. But anyway, so <laughs> so what I'm saying is, what do you think about that, Christian? Do you think that Andre he acts like me? But he thinks like mom. What you think? Or you think you think like me? What do you think about what I said? I think, yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. <laughs> because when if, if something, if we have a, um, not disagreement, but like um, different opinions on something, Andre's usually on mom's side and I'm usually on your side. Yeah, that's generally how it goes, right? For real. It is. Like, if I dance battle him, he'd be like, she'd be like, dad won. If you dance battle me, <laughs> yes, now listen, I, I do win. Every I win every single time. No, so you, you, don't. you challenged me in the shoot, and I beat you in the shoot. Cap. You challenged me. What else was it? Was it the footwork? Carlton. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, when we did the Carlton dance. I beat you in that. No, listen, viewers. Mom said yes. Hold on, wait. We got enough space and opportunity to do the Carlton no, right we good. now. We good. We're, no, we're going to break it down right now. Let's <laughs> no. go. We're going to the Carlton <laughs> dance. Let's go. Come on, Drake. Take the headphones <laughs> off. We're going for the Carlton. Let's go. I'm going first. All right. Christian, here we go. All right, viewers. You tell me what you think. I'm going for the Carlton. Then he has to go and you tell me who the winners are. Not a usual. Hey. 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 No. All right. You'll go, Drake. You'll go. Let's see. Let's see. No, you got to get up, man. You got to get up. You got to get up and try it, man. Come on. Do it no more. Come on. All right, so listen. I'm the winner. I am the victor. Is okay. there another? Do the shoot. Do the no, shoot. No, come on. You do it first. I do the shoot first. All right. So we're getting ready to have a battle of the shoot, okay? Let's see if he, he can get it. Go ahead. Shh. Don't make a sound. Shoot. 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 Okay, I win by default because he's not no, dancing. No, I'm ready. Okay? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, cool, cool. Let's see it. Here we go. Shh. Don't make a sound. All right, let's don't, see. Don't it. sing. You All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Shoot, shoot. All right, my go. All right, here we go. This is Watch the Ebron's dance bar at the house shoot. on a regular. Okay, shoot. here we go. Watch his shoot, don't. Okay, Christian, give it to me. Give me the beat. All right. Shh, uh, don't make a sound. Shoot. Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I think I won. Hit, I won. <laughs> what do you all think? Put it in the comments below. Uh, who won the dance battle, the Carlton and the shoot. All right, that is what Andre and I do all the time. We battle it out. All right, so Christian, <clears throat> having to judge the battle you just saw, okay? Don't pick that. because having, having to judge the battle you just saw, who is the winner? You. Yay! Put your dubs in the air, please. Don't talk to me. It's like a winner that. right here. Okay. <laughs> please. So... I also want to talk about, let's break it down. We just, we're getting very close to the end of um, our first quarter, you know, quarter one for school. And uh, you guys are doing, you know, fairly well. I'm very excited about that. I guess I'm a little out of breath, too, from the dance battle. <laughs> <laughs> but um, how, how is school seventh grade and eighth grade uh, going for you? Christian, how's eighth grade going? Uh, well... 
I definitely notice the difference in um, teaching with different teachers. And it took a little getting used to, but I think it's cool now. And it's, you know, harder, of course. <laughs> Just took the PSAT today. Ooh, yeah, PSAT. Excited PSAT. about that. PSAT. Yeah. Yeah, pre-qualifying for scholarships. That's what we're believing God for. Full rides to where. Didn't any like that. But I just want one that has a good English program. Right, a good English program. I thought we talked about U of M. We talked about some schools in California. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, well, we just believe God and know that when you work diligently that you'll have whatsoever you say. That's what I'm declaring right now. If you agree with me, go ahead and drop a hallelujah below. All right, Dre, what about you, man? Seventh grade. It's a big year. Seventh grade is a big year. How are you doing in school this year? Good. Good? Mm -hmm. All right. What are you enjoying about school? Oh, of course, um, gym. You're enjoying gym? I like gym. Okay, who's your gym teacher? Miss Gulick. Miss who? Gulick. Miss Gulick, yeah. I got a chance to meet her, and she's like the athletic director. Over everything. Over everything. So, yeah, when you have a gym teacher that's fun like that, you learn a lot, you grow a lot. Uh, what about those basketball skills, though? I mean, because. I give you buckets. Anything. No, I give you buckets all the time. Yes. You, you, you rarely come outside. Yeah, Don't say that. I, that's true. Don't but when I do come outside... You lose. No. Uh, Andre, come on now. Let's tell the viewers the truth here. Come on. I beat you in pig before. Before? Like, you say that as if it... You know, before oh, is like... remember, remember we was at the old house. It was 2019. Yeah. 2019. Right now. Like, it was like two... two like, four months ago. Four months ago. Yeah. Okay. But and, here, I, let's, and me and Connor was giving you buckets. Oh, yes, yes. I did not want to embarrass you in front of your friend. That's cow. <laughs> no, but yeah, your jump shot is getting better, and uh, I'm excited. I know you're preparing for basketball season, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. We just yeah, we just went for what a three mile walk, and I was in front. You were, yeah, man. You finished strong. You were jogging and running, did some sit ups at the end. I was very proud of you. Yep. So basketball, what are you thinking? What's, what's your prediction? How many games? Uh, how many games you guys winning? What's happening this season? Whole season, we taking dubs. Taking dubs all season. Yeah, because okay. now, now like like some people who didn't play last year are gonna play this year. Okay, and some like of your some friends? good people. Yeah, they didn't play last year because like it wasn't normal basketball. They had like rules where you couldn't guard behind a three. Yeah, and yeah. It, like now that it's like like I'm playing the whole year because I need to play the whole year so I can get better. For high school, so I can be, get known in college, and then maybe go to the NBA. Are you trying to go to the league? Try. Okay. Well, I mean, you have to figure out what you're going to go for, and then shoot your best shot. No pun intended, but shoot your best shot and handle your business. So uh, I know this year, uh, as it relates to um, the way the academics are more challenging, but your mom, when your mom set that schedule up, pretty sweet for you. She got it hooked up pretty tight. So, Andre also, for those that are listening, last year he ended up getting a full scholarship to Blue Lake to play the clarinet. He said he declined, you know, going to Blue Lake. And I definitely was not getting ready to send him somewhere uh, that he did not want to be. Uh, a, because I know my son. Uh, I knew we would have probably gotten a phone call. Uh, and B, uh just because uh, he, he lost interest in it. So then he wanted to play percussion, but because he was so good at clarinet, the teacher refused to allow him to switch to percussion. And then when he, didn't, he no longer had options and he would have had to play the clarinet, he chose to decline music totally, which I don't know how much in agreement I am about that, but I definitely support uh, you know, what you're interested in. So now let's talk about, they got a chance to see how we get down at the house, you know, uh, the dance battles, you know, the rapping, the singing, the violin playing. Uh, Christian, you had an opportunity uh, to play the violin to open up the drawing board experience tw uh, 2019. How'd you feel about that? 
I thought it was really cool, and I was really nervous at first, but it also helped me. Well, you know, I had a little bit of stage fright. I think everybody does, you know, get a little nervous, but it was really relaxing when I was up there, and everybody was supporting me and everything, so I felt really confident about it, and I was very honored to be able to open up the, uh, the conference, and it was very cool. Good. What are you looking forward to for Drawing Board 2020? What do you, what do you think? What do you want to experience? Uh, I think I want to, I want to experience like just more, just um, learning more, because the speakers at the conference um, this year was were really good, and I thought I learned a lot. Oh, good. What about you, Dre? Now you were be- behind the scenes helping out. Uh, you know, you got a chance because you opened in music with the musical selection, with your violin, and then Andre was the first voice on the mic. He got a chance to introduce your mom and I. So, Dre, how'd you feel, man? Like, your sister had just opened up, you know, with her violin, and then the first voice that they heard at the conference was your voice. How'd you feel about that? I was happy, and at the same time, I was sick. Because yeah. I had got sick. I don't know how, but I got sick. And I was still pushing through. Yeah, where'd you get that from? Like, cause you were legitimately like, you were legitimately sick. Like, you were not feeling well. Voice was like, I don't know what was going on, but you chose to push through anyway. Why'd you do that? Why'd you push through? Cause it was our, like our first conference, and I didn't want nothing to go wrong. It was our first conference, and you knew we were counting on you. So you like, yo, I'm in this thing, right? Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. I was man, it was. It brought me such great joy, just like now, even in the in the podcast, having you guys here tonight, uh, because I just want to expose you to any platform that I may have. Uh, that's not saying that you necessarily may, in your future, decide like you, that you're going to have this platform, but I want you to be able to use anything that I do as your father as a launching pad for anything that you may want to do. So, like... Christian, you you're going to be a writer, and you've already written some things. Like, what is what is your favorite, um, what is your favorite genre or of? Well, I won't bring up music. You told me not to bring up music. Well, I okay. I said it was fine. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. So, favorite genre of music. I like. I like. Alternative rock. Alternative rock. <laughs> yes, and punk music, and punk pop. Okay. What's your favorite song? <laughs> What's your favorite song? I don't have one. You don't have one? Uh, what was that one song that we were just at the house um, and you were singing? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to sing it. I'm not, so don't, don't be afraid of that. But what is the, the one song that you were singing? And I was like, yeah, that was one of the songs that you continued to sing. He just kept singing it. Uh, is it is it um, the middle by Jimmy Eat World? No, what's it? it's an older song, I think like from the eighties or something. Oh, uh, the sign. Oh yeah! Oh my <laughs> goodness, people, listen. So in my house, I'll be wall. I'm just downstairs sitting in my chair, and I hear Christian. I saw the sign. And I opened up my eyes, I saw the sign. Then she comes in my face. No, uh, I don't know. I do not. You do it. She's <laughs> yes, you leaning do. in. And no, she, I yes, don't. You do. yes, yes, you do. And then she's in there washing the dishes, and all I hear is, I saw the sign, saw the sign. And I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> and it's interesting for my wife and I because, and I'm sure if you have middle schoolers or teenagers, all of the music we listen to uh, late 80s, early 90s, or th- throughout the 90s has made a huge comeback. And I'm listening to my daughter and son, listening to you all, singing some of the same songs that I sang at your age growing up. That's interesting to me. <laughs> What's your favorite type of, type of music, Dre? Rap. Rap? Mm-hmm. Who's your favorite artist? I don't have one. You don't have a favorite artist? I like all artists. What about, oh, Dr- uh, Dad, my favorite artist, NBA Youngboy. NBA Youngboy. <laughs> yeah? Hmm. <laughs> Is that your favorite artist? I listen to him. Okay, what about gospel rap? Who do you, who do you like out of gospel rap? Mm. Lecrae. You like Lecrae? Yeah. Lecrae and, um, what was it, Tadashi? 
What? Who? Tadashi. I think his name was Tadashi. Kushi, are you thinking of Takashi Six? <laughs> no, no, not Takashi Six Nine. No, his name is Tadashi. She's like, she's like. <laughs> no, no, not that guy. I'm, uh, I'm talking about. Um, I gotta remember the song that he made, but he rapped. Oh, he made that dumb, dumb, diddy, dumb, dumb. He was on the song with Lecrae. I don't, they don't know about us. Though. They don't know about us. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Okay, yeah, that guy, he was pretty good. We went and saw him in concert, remember? Yeah. Yeah, that, I was like he the big dude? He was the big guy, yeah, yeah. the big fella. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so he was good. I know you didn't get a chance to go to that concert, but, no, it was a, a great time out there. So here's a huge question. What is it like, okay, to have me as your dad? What is it like? <laughs> I think it's really awesome because you have that kind of, like, that kind of chill vibe, and I feel like, you know, it's not, you're like, you're not like, you're strict with us, but not not really, you know? Like, there's certain responsibilities that we have, and you let us know, like, this is what needs to happen, mm -hmm. but you're also very chill, and you like to have a lot of fun, and you know what's going on in our generation, too, so we relate with a lot of things, so, and you work at a school, so if we have any problems going on, do you know what to do? Oh, cool, Christian. That's a huge compliment. What about you, Dre? Um, it, it's, it's, it's kind of what, like what Christian said. Like, if I need to handle my business, you tell me to. And then, if you want to have fun, you can have fun. Yeah, just like. Mm -hmm, like, like us. Like, just like kids. Yeah, like it's I like, it's like when we have fun. It's like you're a kid, too. Well, just a grown, like a grown man. A grown like, kid? A yeah, grown, grown man kid? kid. Yeah, a grown man kid. How, do, how does that work? A grown man kid? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like you're still a grown man, but you're a kid. Yeah, I think, uh, well, I appreciate that, Dre. Uh, one of the things that I do, man, is uh, a rule of thumb that I go by is if you love somebody, uh, you'll take interest in what they're interested in, right? And the way that you can truly tell if somebody loves somebody, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to like all of the things that you like. But at least I take the time to learn about them. So when we talk about them, uh, I'm able to engage you in a conversation about things that you may like. Like when Christian comes up and she likes Spanish, and my Spanish is a little limited, so I'll just say, hola, como estas? You know, and then she'll respond. Estoy bien. Estoy bien. So, yeah, all of those things. And when... Uh, even like working at a school when I'm walking through and I'm saying, what up, though? What up? What's up? What's happening? Like, God bless you. Like, God bless you. So one of the things that I really appreciate is I love uh, expanding my vocabulary. Um, some of the places that I have worked and have chosen to work in serving people, uh, you have to be relatable. So I'm not going around exercising my entire vocabulary uh, but I'm being making sure that I'm relatable. Uh, being a dad for me is one of the best things that I have ever experienced in my entire life. I remember when you guys were first born. Uh, I remember when Christian, you know, uh, mama was uh, greasing your scalp. And it seems like every time you would be, like I would have my suit on when you were little, you would find something to come put on me. It would. It is true. Like you were greasy, your your mom greased your scalp. I came home from for lunch. Uh, that's when I was working for Southeast. So I lived, uh, I lived close to where I worked, and you had just gotten your scalp greased. I think with like some type of, you know, your mom and that natural hair oil. You know, that, she's always been that way. And I had on this light gray suit. And all I know is you came running towards the door, which is one of the favorite things that you did when I came in. And you hugged me and laid that head on my jacket <laughs> and all of this grease all on my suit. Boom. <laughs> and then uh, you would come and have little things on your fingers and just wipe stuff on me just for no reason. <laughs> I, I'm like, what is she doing? So I used to be a person, like, if I got one little stain on my shirt, I'm like, yo, I got to change my shirt. <laughs> I can't. I can't. What? Remember. <laughs> What? Go ahead. Remember that bird pooped on you? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So is this what we're doing? We're bringing out the bird poop story. Okay. So I used to live on on Shane in uh, uh, Prince Hall Drive, which was uh, Noel Village Park Apartments. 
And then we lived in a townhome over there. So I'm sitting on the porch, mm-hmm. as I customarily do, <laughs> sitting on the porch. And then all of a sudden, I felt something hit me. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, is it raining or something? What's happening here? So then, you know, you kind of wipe to, you know, give you the wipe off a little rain or whatever. And this little white residue is coming with it. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, the bird got me. But since we want to talk about... Hey, 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 don't, okay. don't, all right, all right. don't, chill, okay, okay. chill, okay. chill, <laughs> chill, chill, Okay, chill. all right, all right, chill. all right. I will exercise uh, <laughs> uh, the grown man kid privilege here, all right? No, I, I won't go into that story, don't, right? Don't, please. Okay. <laughs> don't. All right, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, promise, promise. So, what is it like uh, having mom as your mom, though? Like, what is it like, Drake? Um... She's a good mom, so it's pretty good. Well, it's not pretty good. That's not what I mean. Like, it, it, it's good. And she has, she gives me a lot of privileges. Like, it, sometimes, like, like if I get like, like, like if I want to go somewhere during or like the weekdays, she lets me, and I get to have fun. Yeah, that's all, mom. I gotta and, tell and you, then, that's. that's but, yeah. But she, I do have to take care of my like my homework before I go. I usually do that all the time just so I can do that. Cause I like, I like, I don't like staying in the house, especially if I can't play my game during the weekdays. I don't like staying in the house. Yeah, I I get it. That's why you got a basketball hoop outside. That is <laughs> that's my philosophy, and you know your mom is a little more lenient in that regard. But that's where we balance each other because. I'm like, yo, listen, you got to stay ahead of your game. You got to make sure uh, you can, for me, Dre, is, I never want you to just be on beat with what everybody else is doing. Because even if you're excelling, and let's just use, we'll use grades, for instance. So for me, while, like, everybody's like, yeah, your child has to get an A, right? And I want you to get the A, but it's not because I want you to get the A. What it says for me is that there's some content that's being delivered to you and if you're able to get an A in that class, you've mastered the content, that you've learned something, right? And if you get a B or a C, but you have, well, not a C. Let me take that off the table because I don't really, you know I don't do Cs. But if you get a B, then it lets me know that you worked as diligently as you can and you have applied yourself and this is where you've been it up. Like this is the level of mastery that you've gotten to. So that's why I want you to get the A. It's not like, oh, my kid better not come home with the B. No, I never want you to just be on step with what everybody else is doing. I want you to be ahead of the game because God bless you. Because you don't have the same goals that they have. And your goals, you know, they're right in front of you. They're available to you. So why am I going to wait and just be on pace with everybody else? I want you to push yourself to as far as you can go. And once you accomplish your goals... Like, success has a way of causing you to see more possibilities, right? That's where the drawing board comes from. So you get to a certain part of success or you get to a portion of failure uh, where you have to realize that it's just another way of getting it done, like Pastor always says to us, is that uh, it's not failure. It just means that there's another way to get what? It done. And to get it done. And so that's what I'm always saying, like, okay, what are your dreams? Like, you want to write. You want to be a writer. What did I tell you? Start writing. No. Now. You want to be a hooper. You want to make it to the league. Like, and even when they give all the statistics about, like, uh, however many in thousands only make it to the league. Like, if it is your goal to make it to the league, like, don't let those statistics determine, like, the effort you put forth. So if you exhaust all that effort, Dre, if you were out there shooting 100 shots a day, if you were out there working out, doing push-ups, sit-ups, all of those things, and you did that all the way through high school, and you grind, and you went to college, and you played there, and you did everything possible in order to reach your, your dream goal of playing in the league, and if it didn't happen, it, it would be disappointing. But you can rest assured that you exerted all that you had. You left it on the table. And I guarantee if you do that in any area of your life, there's some principles that you'll learn that will help you be successful in other other places. Like I was watching, so one of my favorite players is Kobe Bryant. I like Kobe. Who you like? 
I like I like a point guard. Russ, I like Russell Westbrook. Yeah, that is. You like Westbrook. We were arguing about his fashion choices. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. We, you got very upset in the van about his fashion choices. Yeah. But enough with his fashion choices. <laughs> uh, he's a great player. But why do you like him? Because like I'm trying to like. Like I'm, I have like the same energy as Westbrook. Like, like you know how Westbrook does when he gets like all happy and stuff. Like he does that little where he flexes with his arms like that. Right. Yeah, I do that a lot every time I like score on somebody. Yeah, I do that. Oh, you like the way he celebrates after he makes a bucket. And how he has like bounce for a six three guard. He has bounce for a six three guard. Yeah. Okay. What What do you think? It took for him to get where he where he is now. What do you think it took? Mm, a lot. Like what? Like break it down for me. Like I think it took like like two hundred shots a day. Toe toe raises like you know a little thing to get more bounce. Right. Playing and like making the team and other stuff, so yeah. he could be known to go to the NBA. Right. Lots so, of things. So what do I challenge? Christian knows. When you tell me that you want to do something, I challenge you to research it, right? Yeah. And I expose you to the opportunity. So, Christian, there was a time you wanted to be a fashion designer, <laughs> right? Yes? yes. And so what did I do? You, you took me to a meeting to introduce me to your friend who has a fashion business. And he has access to a lot of different fashion designers. And I wanted you to get a chance to talk to someone who was in the industry, right? And who knew about the industry. And what did he tell you? He said research and learn so. <laughs> yeah. And the first thing I remember is he was asking you, he said, you want to be a fashion designer? Who, who do you like, right? He said, what fashion designer do you like? And you were sitting there like, um, yeah, I don't know, right? Fourth grade. <laughs> it was fourth grade. It was. <laughs> it was like it was fourth grade. But he was like, uh, who have you researched, right? Because there are some. There's a fourth grader somewhere in this nation or world that's sitting around designing things, right? And that's what I'm saying. You don't have to wait to live and accomplish your dreams. Uh, you can do them right now especially with the rate of information that you have. So Andre just got his phone. You've had a phone for a while. Like anything you want to know, you can look it up or you can ask. Uh, so Christian, here's another thing. I didn't give you a chance to answer the question about mom. So how's mom, how, how is it like to have, you know, uh, mom as your mom? Well, I think it's cool because she's also an educator. So if there's any school problems she can help, and mom, you know, she's a little bit more lenient on those rules. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, but she still, you know, wants us to get our work done and everything. And she supports us in everything we do. So, I think it's cool. I have pretty cool parents. Oh, cool. Yeah, so shout out to my sweet uh, Shalisa. I know she's at that youth leaders meeting, but... Uh, just wanted to shout her out. She is an awesome mom. Uh, to all of the dads out there, uh, man, it is so. It is such a, a humbling feeling. Uh, it was for me when my wife and I decided, and she was willing to carry our children. And if you've ever been uh, with a woman through the birthing process, man, it humbles you in such a major way. Uh, that someone that you created life with uh, was able to endure uh, such pain to bring to pass and to exercise such an awesome gift of children. So shout out to my wife. Love you forever, baby. And uh, as I used to say when I prayed in the morning before we went to school, Lord, I thank you for my hot smoking wife. You remember that? Yes. Yes. And you all would be like, oh, daddy, don't say that. Don't, right? And I remember we were on our way, I think, to Indiana, and we were talking about relationships. You remember that? 
<laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh, don't get quiet now, Dre. Don't get quiet now, right? So you guys are in middle school. There's a whole lot of talk of dating in middle school. I see it, right? So what do you, what do you all think? What's going on with this dating in middle school? Talk to me about it. Andre, uh, Christian? Well, personally, I think it's really kind of pointless because, like, I think, I personally think that you date to marry and no one's like, I mean, are you really even old enough to do anything? A lot of things. I mean, like, middle school, what do you, you should be focusing on other things like, like, you could be building friendships or something. But I guess it depends on the person, you know. I'm not judging nobody. Okay, can I, can I stop and praise God? Oh, hallelujah, yes. All right. <laughs> My daughter says dating is for marriage. Yes. Andre just wanted to hit the bell after I hit the bell. I'm going to hit that <laughs> bell one more time. Okay. All right. So, anyway. Uh, excuse me, Andre. All right. We're hitting, we're hitting bells around here. All right. But, but listen, so... Uh, I think that's awesome. Where'd you get that mindset, or where'd you get the thought like the dating is for marriage? Well, I I've seen you in mom's relationship, and you know you said I remember when you um got the word from your pastor that you would uh, meet your wife in college, and you know you waited and everything. So it made me think, like you know you should date somebody because you want to marry them, or you're looking for like a partner or something. So. Oh, you were listening. Yeah, so she's quoting uh, a story that I tell so often about when their mother and I met in college. So my pastor at the time is Apostle Dr. Oscar J. Dowdell Underwood Jr., uh, Cathedral of Praise International in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He had prophesied to me that I was going to find my wife in college. And he told me that I should not have anyone in her position. So he also instructed me to just develop platonic relationships because if I was going to have a wife, the foundation of our relationship needed to be friendship. And he broke it down for me. You know, friends are not hugging and kissing and touching and doing other things that they shouldn't be doing because sex really clouds your judgment. So he was telling me, hey, abstain from this sex because if you get into these sexual relationships, it's going to cloud your judgment, right? And so I, I followed that instruction, and I met my beautiful wife. And at the time that I met her, uh, I said, hey, listen, I'm not looking for a girlfriend. I'm looking for a wife. And her reply to me was, well, I'm not looking for anyone. I'm waiting to be found. So, hey, finders keepers, got you. I know that was corny. It's okay. Put it in the <laughs> comments. All right. Hey, they get that all day long. Yeah. So another thing is um, we agreed. Uh, Shalisa and I, my wife and I, we agreed that we had to meet each other's pastors because we were involved in ministry. We had become keenly aware of our calling uh, in the body of Christ and in the kingdom uh, to impact the world. And so we knew that we couldn't be unequally yoked. Uh, we knew um, through our prayer life that we had been praying and fasting and uh, in agreement with one another. But we also understood that we had a covering over our life and that we trusted our pastor uh, had a uh, a mandate from God as an under shepherd of Jesus Christ to oversee and help develop, cultivate our character through a, helping us our mind, will, emotions, covering our soul. Right. So the person that you are believing that's covering your soul is looking after uh, your life here, and we had a, a good relationship. That was my god dad and uh, Dr. Carolee Dixon, chief apostle, who's my pastor now, was her god mom. So we agreed. That if when we met each other's pastor and our pastor say, no, nah, dog, that ain't it. That we were going to, even though we had all these emotions and feelings and, you know, a willingness to commit. If our pastor said, you ain't it. Well, we would have to shake hands and go our separate ways. But thank God that when we met, uh, they got a chance to meet uh, our significant others. meet. We got the green light. So praise the Lord for that. That was awesome. Plus, another confirmation was my cousin auntie. Love my cousin auntie. My cousin auntie, she, you know, uh, my aunt Brenda, who, <clears throat> excuse me, has gone on to be with the Lord. Um, she would always say growing up, uh, Andre, you be talking to all these huzzies. That's what she would say. She would, and so when I, they were not huzzies, okay? Don't, don't write me. Don't put anything in the comments. <laughs> 
And uh, she had come over to visit, and Shalisa was home with me for the weekend. And I was in the back room, and Shalisa was in the front room by the front door where the piano and stuff is. And my aunt had come in the door, mm. and I could hear my Aunt Brenda. And I was like, oh, no, she's going to call her a hussy. I got to get up here. <laughs> and my Aunt Brenda looked at her, and she said, I am so glad that Andre has found someone to help complete his life. And I said, now, listen, if my cousin, cousin auntie did not call this lady, this young lady, a hussy, and she said all these great things, this has to be the one. All right? So, yeah. So, Dre, you thought I was going to let you off the hook. I just had to tell the story that Christian was referring to. So, relationships in middle school, big fella. What's happening? That's it. Oh, come on, man. Let's be real. Then you you had a little girlfriend, didn't you? <laughs> had half. Mm. Huh? Okay, he's trying to plead the fifth on on. I on, plead the fifth. No, he's trying to plead the fifth. <laughs> so, one of the things that Dre shared with me uh, when he called himself having a little girlfriend, and uh, he was walking her to class and carrying her books and all of these things, and I I uh as a father of a daughter and a father of a son, I don't have these double standards where uh, it's okay for my son to date and it's not okay for my daughter to date. No, they are equally the same like, yeah. because well, they have to both be responsible. So he called himself liking somebody, and I started talking to him about, you know, how to make sure you treat a young lady because uh, for all the parents who are saying, oh, my daughter or my son – you know, cannot ever have a little girlfriend or cannot call themselves going to date somebody. Um, here's the thing is that it will evidence itself if they are mature enough to even handle opposite sex friendships. Like they'll show this. So these I've been talking to my kids. How long have we been talking about relationships? Since I was like, uh, like three years, maybe since middle school, maybe, maybe since kindergarten. Since what? Fifth grade. Fifth grade. Fifth grade. You said kindergarten. No. Yeah. I, Andre, I, was, kindergarten. I, I was not talking to you about any boyfriend and girlfriends in kindergarten. <laughs> well, I knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, well, tell me tell me what you knew. What I you knew. Mean? I know. <laughs> <laughs> there was, when I was Don't in, say no names. Don't say okay, no names. Okay, no names. No names. No names. All, right. All right, go ahead. So when I was in Girl Scouts, yes. there were these two girls in Andre's grade. Oh, yeah, And I they remember. would ask me. <laughs> In this sweet little voice, like, where's Andre? <laughs> or whenever Andre would come around, he'd be like, they'd be like, hey, Andre. <laughs> and I would just laugh, like. Oh, that me? is, yeah, because my office oh, was not getter. too far from the, Yeah, <laughs> when, when you guys were going to Cornerstone. Yeah, when they, they had snacks. So and they, they were like, there. where's Andre? <laughs> Mr. Hebron, where's Andre? And you would try to sit in there and be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine a little kindergarten to Muslim. Hey. <laughs> right? Still has the high squeaky voice. Yeah, he did have a little high squeaky voice. I did not have a high squeaky voice. Oh, okay. Anyway. Like, so, like, again. And then I think you were telling me that the young lady uh, recently was like, uh, I can't have a boyfriend till seventh grade. No, that's not what she said. What did she say? She said she, said she wasn't ready to date until seventh grade. She wasn't ready to date until seventh grade. Yeah. And I'm sure you eagerly, as the school year started, not that you were thirsty or anything. I'm not saying that, okay? I'm not saying that. I haven't asked her out, no. No, but I know you guys called yourself talking or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I end up coming up to the school. And there were some kids playing in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did I say to them? You were like, you were like hey, 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 don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you got embarrassed, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> Why? Because you was just like, like, <laughs> it was just weird. It was weird. Yeah, because you like talking to people that I know. Right. And you, did you think that I cared about? <laughs> no. No, I didn't. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> we were at the track. What did I tell you? If you got in trouble at the school, what, what was I going to do? Oh, this is, <laughs> he said, 
said he was gonna walk in. What did they call it again? Capris? No, I what definitely did didn't say I was gonna wear any capris. No, what were they called? Little tight, little, little oh, tight leggings. Not no, you keep using these wrong words, sir. <laughs> I did not say I was coming in anywhere in capris or leggings. Yes. I said you did. I was coming in some track tights. Yeah. yeah, that's not what you said. You right. said I was coming in some leggings. I and, didn't know. And a, <laughs> no, sir. And a shirt. Christian. And I was gonna be walking yeah, like you this. Said, you said the tights. I said track tights, team. track tights. I didn't say any <laughs> behind these leggings, big fella. Yeah. You trying to cap? Okay. I'm not capping. Go ahead. Okay, so you said you was gonna come to the school and embarrass me with some tight uh, track pants on, and mm-hmm. and uh. Uh-huh. Said I'm going down the hallway. Down the hallway, doing moving his arms and moving his hips. Yeah. I said I was going to be power walking in the hallway with track tights on. Yeah. And, and then when I got to your classroom, I was going to knock on the door and start doing what? I don't know. What I forgot. The voice? No. Voice? What did you say? I was like, listen, I'm coming down. If you get in trouble again, I'm coming down doing the speed walking. I said as soon as I hit the uh, hit the door where your classroom is, I'm going to knock. And just start twerking in front of the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, people, this will never happen. This is me just letting him know he better not get in trouble in class ever again. All right? So tell me, man, as we, you know, get ready to close out um, last of 2019, like what are your tw- some of your 2020 goals? Um... um. Stretch. Oh no! And like exercise, cause you know, like you're supposed to get like an hour of like being like active every day. Right. Well, I don't have gym at all, so I'm kind of just stiff. So I want to do like a sport or something. Yeah, I think we talked about you running track in the spring, right? Yep. Yeah, but I know you don't like being told what to do. Right. No, that's not it. What yes, is it, it is. then? Tell me. It just depends on, like, how, what my classes are looking like. Okay, your, your, your class load, your case load. Okay, all right, we'll figure it out. What about you, Dre? 2020 is coming. What's one of your major goals? Um, to get in shape. To get in shape? Yeah. Also, both of you guys are going to get in shape. Physical workout? Yeah, I want to do boxing. Boxing? Yeah. Oh. Yes, MMA. Not Listen, MMA. I keep telling I you about boxing. MMA. Like you have to get slammed, okay? okay. <laughs> you train for MMA. And you said you don't like people touching you, so okay, just like unnecessarily touching me, Christian. But they're but gonna MMA have to unnecessarily like, touch you because they have to no, win. No, no. But it's everyone knows what everyone's doing, though. No, what? they don't. When no, they when don't. you're wrestling and you're going through mixed martial arts. Like, you might catch a foot to the face. For real. I know, you know, but I know, you might catch, it's, you know it's expected. Not, you don't expect it's not ex- it, no. but it's in. It's what happens when you play MMA, so I'll know what's what could happen. And you would be okay with catching a little, yes, you know, I this would. little piggy went to the market right to the face like a payow. <laughs> right? <laughs> You'd no, be okay you with it. No, no, you wouldn't. wouldn't. The would. first time somebody, be, I, no, the first time somebody slams you, that, that'll be my registration fees and everything else <laughs> down the drain. I already know it. Like, I'm talking daddy. about when I get a little older, though. Just a little older. Yes. Oh, okay. So right. you talk about you talk about like learning well, self defense. Yes. Self defense. Okay. All right. Thing. Andre tried. Didn't Andre try to, to uh, come against me? What was that? That was like last, last week. week yeah. yeah, last week. <laughs> I was sitting down. I wasn't even messing with the boy. Yes, you were. You was talking junk. Okay. So, you he tried it. He did. Oh, no, we were practicing. I was teaching some, like, a form, like, from Taekwondo, <laughs> yeah. showing him how, you know, to block and punch, right? And then all of a sudden, he decided that he wanted to lay hands on the Don. And when he laid hands on the Don, he caught these hands, people. <laughs> no, yes, he, he did. No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, remember remember you cheesenecked me? Oh, yeah, he got me, you got me good. Oh. Yeah, he, got, he got me good. I cheesenecked you, and then you got me back pretty good. And then back. he got me back with a, he like, he said. Yeah, I, po- <laughs> I did. I popped you in the back of the neck. But uh, we're getting ready to wrap. Uh, we have about 10 minutes left in the show. And uh, I just must, you know, let you guys know, uh, one of the things that we look at, your mother and I, is that we have about five years before you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, are making, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Yes, getting a little choked up here. Uh, about five years before you guys are uh, out on your own making some major decisions and like determining the course of your life. And we just believe God is going to lead and guide you. Uh, we know he has a plan and a purpose for your life and you guys are gonna go on to do big and great things. I tell you all, all the time, take as many risks right now in the safety of our home because what, what's the worst that can happen? That you learn something and you already have the comfort of our home to be able to take those risks. And one thing that you know is if you tell me you're interested in something, I'm behind you, your mom is behind you 100%. And we're also going to hold you accountable, right? Because I remember it was times you didn't want to go to those lessons and your mom said, girl, you better get in this car, <laughs> right? I remember it was time you didn't want to go to football practice. And I was like, oh, no, you're going today, right? So any last words that you want to say to the people that's watching, that's listening on? Any words of encouragement? Any just reflective words? Um, nope. No? I just want you to know if anybody got an Xbox and you, you, you a grown-up and you have a kid, I got an Xbox and I play 2K. Give him my username. My dad gonna post it on Facebook. No, I'm not gonna post it. He just better <laughs> tell you now. What is your username, sir? It's I I no capital and it's capital K, and then it's King with two G's, and then it's capital D, E no R E, and the I I again. Wait, spaces between the. I, I okay, I don't know what this boy's <laughs> username is. He called himself King Dre. And he actually didn't give himself that name. Uh, when Dre came into the world, we had some challenges around him getting here. Uh, he is a miracle, literally, from sitting in this seat. Uh, God made sure uh, to ensure that, you know, nothing, no residual um, damage or anything else from the difficulties and complications with his birth. And while he was in the NICU, uh, the nurses, they named him King Andre. Uh, he was the only baby inside of the NICU that they could actually take out of the incubator and hold and talk to, and Andre was thriving and growing. And I just believe, this is what I believe, so uh, that sometimes you have to go through certain things so that the anointing that's on your life can minister to those who otherwise wouldn't have contact with it because of where they happen to be. So I just believe that God took Andre through the NICU to be able to bless those other babies because when I was in there sticking that one finger in the actual uh, incubator before he can come out, I prayed for all those other babies, and I was singing praises to God, believing God for miracles to happen. And you see my son here. I have to, you know, go ahead and beat him in the shoot and beat him in the Carlton. But <laughs> he is a miracle kid. They all have great spiritual giftings. And uh, I'm just thankful to God that we have a home church and a pastor that can assist my wife and I as we lead our children uh, in the ways of the Lord, uh, taught and raised them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. So the great is their peace. So as we close out tonight um, with about a couple minutes left, uh, one of you know, I'm a dean of, culture, dean of Climate and Culture for Detroit Public Schools Community District. And today we learned of some tragic news of one of our deans, uh, who was the dean at Henderson, uh, which is a K-8 school. Um, and uh, he was involved in that tragic car accident that was on Davidson. Uh, I saw the car accident not occurring, but I saw the wreckage when I was on my way to work traveling to Davidson today, having no idea that uh, he had been in that car accident. So when I learned of it today, like, man, it really impacted me because we were just at a meeting together. Uh, he was strategizing ways that he could better minister and serve the children that were going to his school, uh, learning better ways to minister and, and serve the staff that's there empowering children uh, social, socially and emotionally, academically. And uh, I knew he was involved in ministry. Uh, he just was getting all of these strategies to go back and really, like, reshape the climate and culture at his school. So, um, you know, I want to take a moment of silence for Brandon Clark, uh, who lost his life today on Davidson Freeway. Um, to all of the fa to his family, our prayers of strength and comfort go to you. Uh, to all of my DPS CD family, 
uh, our prayers and, and of strength and comfort go to you. And so if we can just take a moment of silence, if you all can be praying for his family. Again, his name is Brandon Clark. Uh, he was only 26. Well, he would, his birthday would have been tomorrow, uh, but, you know, he lost his life today. Uh, we take confidence in knowing that he knew the Lord, and so to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. Can we take this moment of silence? All right, praise the Lord. Uh, as we close out today, it is important that you take action on your future right now. Uh, your future will be composed of the decisions you make in your present. And so if you want to see yourself have a successful future, a motiva motivated future, an inspired future, a courageous future, an adventurous future, a future that is full of vitality and life and strength and health, it is all determined by the decisions that you dare to make today. So like I always say, your future is not behind you, it is not before you, it is within you, and it's just a matter of time. God bless you from the Ebrons. Peace. <laughs>